Today is Superhero Sunday. It's a very special Sunday. In fact, if you are uh, visiting here today, whether it be online or in person, today is such a great snapshot of the heart of this church um, because every single year we take a weekend to celebrate and to spotlight the champions of our church, those individuals with special needs. And, and you know what? Um, I just want to say that we every week celebrate. Every week we have Champions Club for, for kids with special needs and then also we we have illuminators for adults with special needs. So all over this campus and also at Cape, uh, we have just great things happening. But you might say, what's Champions Club? It started about 11 years ago. It was 11 years ago this October, actually. Um, and it started, honestly, because uh, Jen and I uh, had had our third son, Paxton, uh, the year before, in October of 2011. And we didn't know this until he was born, but once he was born, we discovered that he had Down syndrome. And this beautiful boy shifted something inside of Jen and I, as well as our two older boys, Caden and Connor, as well as, I would say, the staff of this church and the church itself, Something shifted, and Paxton, for me personally, opened up my eyes to a whole world that was always there, but I didn't see it as clearly until he arrived. And that is the world of families who on a daily basis have the joys and the challenges of special needs somewhere in their home. And October 6th of 2011 would be a day that I'll never forget because um, that day I was writing my message. I was actually at my home in my office and I was writing a message trying to get out of my heart on paper what I wanted to communicate that Sunday. And Jen had gone off for one of her final um, OB appointments uh, with her doctor because in two weeks Paxton was going to arrive. And, and so, obviously, there's a lot of, you know, anticipation and stuff like that as these last two weeks, the home stretch, and Jen, you know, could not wait and, uh, to be able to sleep normal again and not have this, you know, you know and, and every mom understands that, and she's like, I'm just ready for this date. And it was a scheduled C-section, but that day she had gone to the doctor, and the doctor said that her, her fluid was, was, was like really, really low, dangerously low in her womb, and, and this could affect little Paxton. And so um, the doctor said, hey, listen, we're going we're gonna to take this baby today. And so she called me, and I'm prepping my message, and she says, hey, Jer, um, Paxton is coming today, ready or not. And I'm like, what? And then she said this. She goes, they're literally going to put me into a wheelchair and cart me from the doctor's office across the, the, the parking lot to the hospital and admit me. We still have a long time. Go ahead and finish your sermon. That's really what she told me. I was like, how am I supposed to finish my sermon now, you know? So I kind of just spit some stuff out on the paper and, you know, just got, you know, the overnight bag and everything ready and ran up to the hospital. And within hours, Paxton was born. And I'll never forget that we were in the OR and, and you, know, uh, you know, Jen is on the operating table and, and she's having a C-section. So I'm down by her head and I'm talking to her and there's this curtain that's blocking us from all the things that I never want to see. And... <laughs> and uh, Anyway, I hear this little, little voice, this cry, and we're like, we're, we're crying. This is this moment of celebration. And then shortly after that, the doctor um, very uh, graciously and professionally, but also um, very forthright, said, uh, hey, Jen and Jeremy, um, I want to let you know that your baby has traces of Down syndrome. And uh, boy... I didn't know what to do with that. In fact, I asked her to repeat that. I was like, what? What did you say? And she repeated it. And I was like, okay. And at that moment, uh, there was this, like, confusion that entered the room. And for the next few days, uh, we, we kind of tossed and turned between elation of having a brand new boy, our third boy, and also this fear and confusion and a sense of just not knowing what to do with this news and this new normal that we were in. And uh, Sunday was coming, and Jen was still in the hospital, and, and Jen said, you need to go preach, and we need to announce to City First. At that point, it was called Rockford First, the church was. I said, she said, Let, let's announce that Paxton was born, because obviously the church was excited. They knew for the you know, last nine months Jen was pregnant. They're, they're waiting. They're excited. But I wasn't sure how to announce this. So I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to take you back about 12 years ago, 12 years ago this coming October, and I want you to watch as I announce to the church about Paxton, because for me and this church, it was a moment that changed us all forever. In fact, Champions Club was born out of this. Superhero Sunday was born out of this. But more importantly, God did a work in Jen and my and also Caden and Connor's lives. And, and, you know, Paxton is just the greatest gift. But let's take a moment and go back to the day. Watch this. Now, the one thing that I have yet to tell you is this, that we discovered on Thursday, and that is this, is that when little Paxton was born, we found out that he has Down syndrome. And you know what? We didn't know that. There were early indicators that possibly, that there were markers, they would call it, in ultrasounds and such like that, that possibly he had a tendency to maybe be Downs. And um, we prayed, and it was interesting, all the markers went away. In fact, the specialist told us that, you know what, your child is perfect. So it was out of sight, out of mind for us, and we went into the operating room that day, and, and we discovered, <laughs> listen to this, we discovered that God did give us a perfect child. I, <laughs> the last 72 hours have been full of a lot of, um, a lot of emotional moments for Jen and myself. As you well could imagine, uh, we've had ups and we've had downs and we've had moments where we're Scared, and there's moments also that we feel God's supernatural power. And there's a sense of this. We believe with all of our hearts, both of us believe, and our family included, that God has assigned this child to us for us to take care of him and for him to take care of us. And I will tell you, We are favored to have this child with us. And I realize some of you might say favored. That's a strange word to use. No, no, it's an appropriate word because whenever we use favored in church, many times people think of a new car or a promotion at work. But I will tell you that God many times has a different definition of favor. And I feel that God looked at the families. And he said, you know what? I want to see Paxton go to the DeWert family. And this is what we've realized. We realize this is our new normal. This is our new reality. And this is the DeWert family. And he's my boy. And I love him like crazy already. It's, it's so funny. Jen and I are like going, we love him so deeply. And he already is changing us. And I will tell you, let me just say this as a sidebar here. No condolences, no I'm sorry's, please, because this is the reason why. If we believe that there should be condolences or our I'm sorry's coming our way, then we don't see this as a gift because God gives good gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light right into our hearts and into our lives. So I'm going to tell you, I love it. You want to see him? All right, here he is. This is Paxton James DeWert. <laughs> now, who's that young guy? I mean, really. I told Jen, I go, I don't look a day older, right? And she's like, ah, oh, you need to get your eyes checked. But anyway, <laughs> I said something in that, uh, in that message, in that announcement that I want to drill down on today, and actually the topic of my message. I said this, I said, there were times that we felt scared, and then there were other times we sensed God's supernatural power. Fear, supernatural power. Fear, 
supernatural power. Aren't those the two factors, the two things in our lives many times that we deal with in certain seasons? There's fear. There's fear of people or future or presence or losing control or losing money or making a mistake or fear of God, fear of death, fear, fear, fear. Our world is full of fear. And yet for those of us that that are Christ followers, on the other side of the spectrum, there's also a sense that there is a God who's supernatural, and he will give us strength and power and ability beyond our own natural abilities. Now, I'm not talking the kind of power like in a Marvel movie or something like that, but instead a power to overcome all of the junk in this hopelessly broken world that we live in. Our God adds his super to our natural and gives us supernatural power to overcome, right? In fact, um, in 1 Corinthians, Paul writes this. He says, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Do you know this Christianity thing, this faith thing, it's not just talk. It's not just hallelujah, blessed be the name, you know. All these words, it's not just talk. It is living with a supernatural power in this broken world. Like, have you ever met, you ever met anybody that, that, that just had that personal faith in Jesus and there was a little bit something extraordinary about them? Now, I'm not saying they were weird or anything like that. My point is, is that they had a strength that seemed unnatural. Like, they would go through hell, but yet they kept their face focused to heaven. Or, or they had a vigor, an enthusiasm, a vitality, something about them. There was a resilience. It, it, they, weren't, they weren't perfect. And, and they, were, they were not just living life. It was like they were alive, right? There's a difference between living and being alive. And there was this sense that, that as they encountered hardship and obstacles, even though those obstacles would many times leave scars. They still kept going like the Energizer Bunny, right? There's a resilience about them. It's kind of like um, one of Pax's favorite toys here. This is a um, splat ball. You know, ever seen these things? Okay. And like you, you know, do this and no matter how hard you do it, it just comes back into shape, right? I mean, you can squeeze it, you can pull it or whatever else. It's like they have a faith like this. No matter how much they're stretched, how much that they are pounded, how much the enemy throws at them or this hopelessly broken world, they seem to have an overcoming kind of tendency. They stay positive, maybe not all the time, but overarchingly they're positive. There seems to be an authority in their life. What do I mean by authority? It's that there's a confidence there, and it's not like a, a self-manufactured confidence. I get on social media, which, by the way, I've been off of for the last couple months. It's been heavenly. But I would say this. <laughs> you get on social media and you see people talking about, you know, they're, they're like, I'm a queen, I'm a king, I'm all that or whatever else. And it's like they're trying to talk themselves into being all that. And yet these people I'm talking about, they don't have to do that. They just are confident. There is a sense of resilience, right? There seems to be a blessing even a favor on their life. They, they have a power, power, wonder-working power, like that old, that old song that we used to sing, right? It's, a, it's more than a positive outlook. It's like God is with them. Now, listen, don't get me wrong here. They don't float instead of walk. They don't teleport. They are not perfect. They make mistakes. They screw up. They bear the scars of some of the battles they've been through. But overarchingly, they have a resilience. You ever met anybody like that? You know, it's like their faith is more than just talk. Their faith is living by God's power. That's what I want for each and every one of us today. Whether it's your very first time here or whether you've been here a thousand times. Nowadays, culture is all kinds of talk. There's all kinds of talk, too much talk. Talk, 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 talk. But instead, let's have a faith that's resilient. It's not just talk. It's living by God's power, right? You know, they, um, a lot of people want more than just talk. They, want to don't, they don't want to go to church. In fact, you might even be here today, you know, peeking in the window of online or whatever else. And, and you're like, I don't need just 
like hyperbole. I don't need just talk. I, I want to have tools. I need to have something that helps me overcome the situation I'm in, the, the hell I'm going through, the difficulties at work, the, the, the marriage that seems to be on the rocks, whatever it is, the health battles, you want something that you can actually, you can grab onto, it has handles. Well, I will tell you today, we want to talk about how to walk in that power. So how, how do you walk in that power? Well, you know, first of all, you got to understand this. You got to understand that you don't have the power necessary to live the kind of life that God desires you to live. That's, that's the very first step. The very first step is, 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 is getting out of denial that, that you can do it all. Because you can't do it all. Only God can do it through you. In fact, it says in 2 Peter this. It says, by his divine power, not by your power, but by his divine power, divine meaning godly, God has given us everything we need. He's already given you everything you need to encounter what you're going through right now because of his power to live a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. In other words, when you made Jesus the leader and the forgiver of your life, you received access to supernatural power to be able to have access to everything you need to navigate this hopelessly broken world. It's by his power, not ours. What else? Why else do you need supernatural power? Well, the thing is, we got we to gotta know this. Secondly, God's spirit gives us the power we need to live the kind of life God desires. So not only do we not have the power to do it, God is the one that actually enables us to live the kind of life he wants us to live. Jesus, before he ascended to heaven, after he rose from the dead, he didn't just abandon us. He ascended to heaven, but he said this, I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you a spirit that's going to live with you and in you that will give you supernatural power. In John 14, it says this, but the Holy Spirit will come and what's those two words? Let's say it all together. Ready? One, two, three. Help you. How many of you need help? I need help. I need help with everything. <laughs> In fact, I can't think of something I don't need help with. So you know what? I need help. So the Spirit comes to help us because the Father will send the Spirit to take my place, Jesus said. The Spirit will teach you everything and will remind you of what I said while I was with you, Jesus said. Then Jesus went to heaven and the Spirit of God came, and he was a helper, and he is a helper. Someone that would lead us, someone that would empower us, someone that would assist us, that would point us to Jesus. In fact, as Jesus was God's tangible physical presence in this world, God's Spirit is his tangible presence in us. Do you understand that? And one of his assignments is to help us to live a godly life. Try to be more holy on your own. I dare you. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to be more holy. I want to do what I want to do. I want to blow off God. I want to sin. I want to do everything that this world says will be fun, right? And you're the same way. The only way that we can be holy, the only way we can live an overcoming life is that God has to help us do it. In fact, it says in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it says God's spirit will come on you with power. In other words, when the spirit comes, he brings power. It says in Luke 24, the spirit will come with power. It says in Romans 1, 4, Jesus was raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. So listen, where there's the spirit, there is power. Does that make sense? And the spirit lives inside of you if you're a Christ follower. I think all of us would agree that life can be challenging. In fact, I hear people talk a lot that they went through a challenging season here or there. I would actually like to edit those statements. I think it's challenging. Life is challenging most of the time. It really is. It may, not, it may be more challenging in certain seasons, but it's never easy. <laughs> it's never a cakewalk. And many Christians, what they try to do is they try to work really hard. They try to please God. They try to live right. And most of the time, the harder they try the harder it is for them to do. Why is that? Well, it's because we can't do it on our own strength. In fact, um, we have to admit we can't do it. In fact, there's a far greater power, power available. 
There's two ways that you can live your life, and I can live my life. There's really two ways. The first way is this, is that we can rely on our own power. In other words, our own abilities, our own instincts, our own skills, our own wisdom, or whatever else. Or the second way is to rely on the power that is provided by the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like if I had, let's say, a tree, all right, and I wanted to cut down the tree. I could use this, all right, this is a knife with a serrated blade, and, and guess what? Give me long enough and enough sweat equity, and guess what? I could probably get myself through that tree. I could saw that tree down. I could do it. Or there is a much more powerful tool that I can use that will be a lot easier, and guess what? I'm not doing it. It's the tool that's doing it. It's the machine that's doing it, right? And in the same way, I can live my life in my strength or I can rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to help me do things that I can't do on my own or at least not very well on my own, right? Too often, I think, in life, we find ourselves being failure conscious. In other words, you focus on all your failures, right? The enemy helps that, by the way. It's called guilt and shame. So you might have 10 things that you do that are right and then one thing that you screw up. And what do you focus on? The one thing that you screw up, right? And when you're in your own strength, I promise you this. When you're trying to live life in your own strength, you will focus a lot on how you miss the mark. You just will. I mean, you'll, you'll think about it. You'll be like, oh, I should have done this better. I could have done this better. But the Spirit of God, when he brings his power, he makes us victory conscious, not failure conscious, victory conscious. Here's the reason why. He helps us understand that it is the victory of the cross and the victory of the empty grave that actually is doing the work in us. It is not our effort trying to saw through life. Instead, it is because of Jesus' victory that we can be victorious. I love what Corey Ten Boone said one time, and she wrote this. For those of you who don't know, uh, she was in a concentration camp during World War II in Nazi Germany, but she was a Christ follower. She later on wrote this. She said this, God has made me able to conquer weakness, fear, and inability, and I stand and declare that whosoever believes in Jesus shall not be put to shame. Jesus was victor. Jesus is victor. Jesus will be the victor. And now his victory has become ours. See, his victory becomes our victory. In fact, I'd even go as far to say this, and some of you may disagree. Anything good in us is not us. It's him. It's because of Jesus that anything good happens. And so we have access to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. In fact, in Romans, Paul writes this to the church in Rome. He says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Now, I want you to think about this. When you woke up this morning, you looked in the mirror, and you're like, oh, God, you know? <laughs> I got to do some work here. No matter what you felt, no matter what challenges you've gone through this week, when you woke up today, do you know that the spirit of the living God lives inside of you, and that same spirit raised Jesus from the dead, which means the same power is in you? How would we live life different? If we knew that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, we remind ourselves of that every single day. See, we forget, and we become failure conscious, but we need to be victory conscious. Jesus was talking to his disciples about how the Spirit of God is going to come after he left, and this is what he says in Acts chapter 1. He said, John, which is John the Baptist, John baptized with water. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So what Jesus is saying here is it's like, yeah, you can get baptized with water, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to send the Spirit of God, and he will baptize you. The word baptize means to immerse, to immerse. So listen, you aren't just filled with God's Spirit. You are immersed in God's Spirit. And then Jesus went on to tell these disciples, he said this, he said, but... 
you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now that word power there, this power is going to come upon you. The Greek word for that power is dunamis. That's what the Greek word is, dunamis. This is where we then get the word dynamite from, okay? The definition of dunamis is this, an ability a power, a mighty deed, supernatural power. So when Jesus says a power of the Spirit, a dunamis power is going to come upon you, that comes upon us too. I know you don't believe it because you don't feel it. Most days I don't feel it either. I got to remind myself that there is a dunamis power inside of me, that there is a spirit of God inside of me, a fire inside of me that makes me more than a conqueror, makes me victorious, even when I'm going through the most hellish situations. A power beyond my natural ability, a power beyond my natural skills or intellect, Remember who Jesus is talking to when he says this. He's talking to disciples that couldn't get anything right. These guys were screw-ups. They argued. They were afraid. They disobeyed. They denied Jesus. At one point, Jesus looked at one of them and said, get behind me, Satan. They were weak-willed. They're full of compromise, worldly ambition. And Jesus says to them, no, the Spirit of God is going to immerse you with dynamite power you just wait and see what God's going to do through you. These were then the men that went out and changed the world. And his followers, men and women, when dunamis power came upon them, they went and evangelized the world. They changed the world. They, God, through them, healed the sick. I mean, it was amazing. These people were weak, and they became strong. And we think of supernatural power as lightning bolts coming out of our fingertips or something like that. Or, or we think of signs and wonders, which I believe in signs and wonders. But you know what I need today? I need to be able to live a kind of life that God wants me to live. So what's the purpose as we begin to wrap this up? What's the purpose of the Spirit giving us supernatural power so that we can just have supernatural power? No. The number one purpose is this. The power to be bold for Jesus. To be bold that's one thing, when the Spirit of God fills you, there is a boldness that comes upon you. In fact, he said, you will be witnesses to the ends of the earth. This is the people like Peter that denied Jesus three times just a little bit before that to a little servant girl. He didn't have the ability to stand up for Jesus, and now Jesus is saying, when this power comes on you, you're going to be bold. You're going to go to the ends of the earth and proclaim my name. A boldness. The Spirit gives you strength to know what is right, to do what is right, and to speak what is right and in the right way. Second thing the Spirit of God does when he gives us power is that the power to, to, to compensate when we're weak. You know, um, I think all of us are weak to a certain degree, right? I know we all want to be like strong and we never want to show our weaknesses and things like that, but all of us have weaknesses. In fact, uh, have you ever felt underqualified for life? <laughs> you know, I love what it says here. It says in Romans, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Notice that when we're weak, the Bible talks about, then we're strong. Because when we get to a place where we admit our weakness, that's when the Spirit of God can compensate with his strength. He adds ability to our ability. Do you need wisdom this week? Is there a meeting coming up and you're like, I need a lot of wisdom? There's a Holy Spirit power for that. How about are you facing a difficult situation this week, a really tough decision you got to make? There's a Holy Spirit power for that. Are you having trouble with compromise, sin? You're having trouble obeying God. You know there's a power for that. Are you and your spouse at each other's throats? And you need something to change in your relationship. There is a divine power for that. You need to make a big decision. Whatever it is, there's a supernatural power for each of those scenarios. What's another purpose for God's power? It's basically this, to fully understand and develop into the person that God wants you to be. I already talked about that a little bit, but... 
You know, I love what it says in Ephesians. It says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with the inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power, what? Power to understand. What do you need to understand? As all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. The power to understand God's love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. You understand that, that you were made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. So God wants you to develop into who he wants you to be, and he's going to do it with you, all right? Power to understand a relationship with him, power to grow in a relationship with him. Number four, to have confident hope, confident hope in this hopelessly broken world. God gives you the power to do that. Do you know that hope is power? Hope is power. A hope knowing that God is there and he's with you. In fact, Paul said it this way to the Romans. He said, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with his joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So as I close, where do you need God's power right now? In your marriage, in your physical body, in your emotions, in your relationship, in your career, in your spiritual life, where specifically do you need God's power? What are you facing right now? Well, I think there's two physical postures that represent an invitation to God's power. The first is this. Now, this right here is a physical posture that you can go anywhere in the world and people will know what you're doing. You're surrendering. Doesn't matter what language they speak. If you did one of these, it's surrender. So I think a physical posture of inviting the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit is first of all saying, God, I give up trying to run my life on my own and do it all in my own power and my own intellect and my own wisdom and my own intelligence and my own moxie and all those kind of things. I I say, I surrender. I surrender to you. You take charge. The second physical posture is this. Fill me. Fill me up. In other words, fill me up. I surrender. Fill me. I surrender. Fill me. And I believe that those two physical postures invite the power of God to come into your life. So today, can we pray these physical postures as we close? Let's bow our heads, all right? Lord, today, we pray symbolically, in a sense, saying our hands are up. We surrender. We surrender to you. We're weak. We fail. Even on our best day, it's not good enough. No matter how hard we try to be holy, we can't. Lord, we're facing circumstances that are bigger than us, challenges that are real. We surrender. Secondly, Lord, we symbolically cup our hands together, palms up, and say, fill us. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your power, your wisdom. Fill us with your favor. Fill us with healing. Fill us with right thinking. Fill us, Lord God. Immerse us, dunamis power, I pray, to overcome and get through the challenges of our days. Lord, we surrender and we ask you to fill us. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let me just say this. You may have to pray that prayer. In fact, I encourage you to every day. I surrender today. Fill me. I surrender today fill me. But some of you might say, I need to surrender on a whole nother level. I need to give my life to Jesus. I've never done that before. It's not not that I just need, I need to surrender for today. I need to surrender my life. And if that's you, all you got to do is pray a prayer like this. You just say, 
Jesus, be the leader and forgiver of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your spirit. I believe you died for me. You love me. I want to live for you. I'm tired of trying to live on my own. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Come on, can you put your hands together for what God does?